You're listening to Force Majeure, an actual play podcast that's normally Star Wars, but today we are doing something different. We are once again playing the magnificent Mecha Hack from Absolute Tabletop and Matt Click, and what a hoot we are having with this one. I'll be a little bit spookier than last time round. Oh, yes. There has not yet been any giant robots punching giant robots or indeed giant monsters, but that is probably on the cards, let's be honest, given where we last left our players. And speaking of those players, I'm going to ask them to say hello to you in a minute, tell you who they are and who they're playing, and then I will beat them with horrible monsters in the heart of an asteroid in space. I'm going to start this time round, I think, with Sammy. I'm Sammy, pronouns are she, they, and I'm playing uh, Faye whose pronouns are they, them. And my call side is Barricade. I am Chris Lamecat on the uh, forums, and I'm playing Rook, and the uh, call sign for Rook's uh, mech is usually Iron Decimus. I'm ACJ, he, they on the Discord. I am playing Nox, who is piloting Mini Void today. I am Riley, he, him. I am playing Lucas, he, him as well. Lucas's call sign is Carbon Rex, and he is piloting Razor, although today he is piloting Razor Jr., or RJ. Where we last left our heroes, they are in a hollowed-out asteroid that has been turned into a research and development base by the Aeonic Primacy, which they understood to have been abandoned. But having arrived there, it suggests that abandonment was perhaps not entirely voluntary, for they have seen signs of terrible, bad things happening here. The asteroid is pitch black. There is no power. There is limited gravity. And what gravity there is, is not obeying the laws of reality as we know it. There is something very uncomfortable and non-Euclidean going on in this asteroid. True to horror tropes, our party have split themselves in a fashion that will definitely not go wrong for them. We can see as our camera races through the darkness of the asteroid, lit by the magic of cinematography so that you can see what they cannot. Corks going round the twists and turns of this asteroid, where corridors have been put in following the lines of ore that have been mined out in times past. We can see Lucas and Faye in a room which is 90 degrees up from where everybody else is, and the gravity is 180 degrees up from where we expect, because the floor is not where the floor should be, for where the room is. They are clustered around a ruined generator. A discarded and severed hand from an Aeonic Primacy cyborg lies discarded on one side of this room, which is full of life support equipment, gravity generators, and similar useful things to have on an asteroid that is otherwise inimicable to mortal life. With a great grin of triumph, Lucas has managed to get the generator ready to go when the rest of the fire team give the signal to fire it up. Faye watches on, presumably judging, knowing Faye. Not bad for a fleshy one. Um, <laughs> however... Leaving them behind, our camera continues on down further corridors to a great shaft which runs through the heart of this asteroid, stretching up, down, and across. And across is where our camera is currently focused. There is a bridge spanning this hole. We can see Rook and Nox and their exosuits casting around their stab lights, which are providing the only glimmer of illumination in the Stygian darkness. Their lights have glittered off something coming towards them from the other side of the bridge. Many somethings, in fact. Small and chitinous, and chittering and moving with great speed. And before I even describe to you any clearer what it is you're facing, because at the moment they are a suggestion, a moving wave of insectoid skittering. I'm going to ask for initiative checks from you two, please. It is a mobility or systems test, your choice. If you succeed, then you go before the enemies. If you fail, you go after. Combat will apply here if you have that skill. Combat increases it by two? It does, yep. Oh, then I'm good. I rolled 11 on 11, but with the two, I rolled 11 on a 13. Oh, 
Uh, yeah, so I rolled a 20, but I do have adaptable robotics, so I'm going to it. Re- Use it. That. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, good, it's a four. That's much better. Okay. <laughs> because, of course, as we remember the last game, a natural one is a critical success, where as well as doing really well and double damage if you're attacking something, you also get a bonus cherry. A natural 20 is a critical fail, and as well as doing badly, Bad, bad things will also happen to you, such as the nature of the beast. It's getting swarmed by a giant batch of chitinous creatures. Lucas, Faye, I'm not going to ask you to roll initiatives for this reason. You're currently about ten minutes behind where the rest of the group are. They've gone on ahead and done some exploring, and... Found something. Yeah, so it's going to take you, even at your top speed, even at your top speed, Faye, burning out your reactor halfway around, it's still going to take a little bit of time for you to get there. That's not to say you're not going to get a chance to react and do things, even if all that is is, is making a move or turn the generator on. You'll, you'll still get a chance to do something, but it's not going to directly impact the combat that's coming. For clarity's sake, Nox and Rook, what you are facing here is a swarm. Now, a swarm is an optional rule where these creatures have a hit threshold, and rather than hit points, they have a dice are starting at a d10. If you do damage to them but don't cross the threshold, I roll their swarm dice and on a roll of a 1 for these particular creatures, that swarm dice decreases. Anything other than a 1, it stays the same. You've not done enough damage to take out their numbers. Mm. They have a hit threshold, however, and if you go over that hit threshold with your damage, the swarm dice automatically downgrade because you've put enough raw explosions into them that I don't need to make that roll. But it does mean that there is the element of chance and that a great hit might not necessarily be the greatest hit you hoped it would be. Hmm. They are charging towards you. At the moment, they are far from you. That is two range bands before they can engage you in melee, but they're covering that ground quick. Focusing your stab lights on them, they appear to be a cross between beetles and rats. They are roughly quadrupedal, about the size of a large rat or a, or a, a small cat. They are covered in glittering chitinous scales. They don't appear to have any external compound eyes. But what they do have is a whole fringe, like a lion's mane, of waving cilia yeah. that are oh. moving in the airflow. Their beaks, for they do indeed have beaks, are sharply pointed. And when they open their mouths to cry at you in some barely audible infrasound, it splits open in four, almost like a pyramid flowering before closing. The inside is again laced with tiny cilia, but the tips of that beak glitter like razor diamonds in the flittering stab lights. Thanks, I hate it. Yeah, right? (laughs) Place to go first. Either of you can take the first lot. Upon seeing these skittering monstrosities, if Rook were to have been paying attention to Nox's face, he would have seen actual horror for the first time ever, knowing this individual. Uh, So as just a reaction, uh, she's going to just immediately blast it with her beam cannon as best she can. That's fair. And she's going (laughs) to scream into the microphone, hit the juice, we found the creatures. And then she's going to blast. Yeah. So I'm rolling on power with combat. Yeah, so you need to roll under that. Sweet. I rolled under it with a 14 on a 17. Yep. Five damage. That is not quite enough to cross their threshold. Their threshold is six. So I'm going to roll a d10. That's their swarm dice and see if they downgrade. They do not. Your panicked wildfire, it it takes out a few of them on the, the leading kind of edge. But all that happens is the ones behind it just run over those bodies and continue their inexorable motion towards you. Second action. Mobility to get the heck out of Dodge. Yeah. I just run. I go as far as I can towards the crew. (laughs) We might have to kite them. Yeah. Hey, we might have to... uh, uh, What? Oh, crap. Already doing it. Bye. (laughs) (laughs) No, just... No, 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 no. Missile barrage. (laughs) So So his special module he's got on him is Missile Barrage, which is basically a backpack of, uh, like, you know, like an almost anti-aircraft-like 
system where it just shoots off like a box that has like a bunch of missiles on it. And uh, he just kind of just ducks down, you know, like the classic Mandalorian shooting off the, the one rocket. Instead, it's just a bunch of mini rockets that fire off the back there. I have to hit somebody with a near or far range. And these are far range right now. Yep. So I'm uh, going to do that. That's 4d4 damage. It's an action test with powers. So I guess I need that first. So that is 20 powers, a 16 combat. We give it a plus two. It makes it an 18. And I rolled a 15. So that's good. Woohoo! Excellent. So now I got to roll all the damage, right? Yeah. Rather than need to split it amongst different creatures, just roll it as a pool and let me know that's what fine. I'm fine. So that's 12 damage. Ooh. Ooh, nice. Yeah, that is over the threshold. Of, you don't, I don't need to roll. As your micro missiles start blowing holes out of the group of the... Reactor die. Yeah, roll your reactor die to see if that degrades. That's a seven. As your missiles slam into them, it starts to, to take out parts of the bridge that they're racing across as well. And you notice that there is a spray of blood that starts to hiss slightly as it hits the metal around the of the the bridge as it hits the rock. And there's the acid. It's not strong enough to eat in. We're not talking full-blown alien xenomorph here where it'll burn okay. through 15 layers of deck. But it's definitely starting to sizzle from these creatures. It could just be that there's not enough. You know, they're not big enough to bleed enough to, to do that much damage. Yeah. Your sensors pick up once again a surge of that organic compound that it can't identify in the air as you basically as both your missiles and your beam cannon kind of start fragging some of them your second action i am moving back as well <laughs> nope 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 we're gonna have to kite them <laughs> there's hissing blood this is bad the creatures race towards you you are far enough away that they cannot do anything. In fact, they're having to use all their energy to try and catch up to you. But they cover that distance in horrifyingly... What a weird way of pronouncing horrifyingly. In horrifyingly quick time. <laughs> they are terrifyingly fast. And as they get into the opening of the tunnel that you're frantically backing down, they split up as well, starting to cover oh. up the side of the walls as well. <laughs> this tide, now there's more space than to spread out. It means that the ones at the back can move forward in. And you can hear the skittering clack of their claws because the end of their limbs are like circular pads that are open up with thousands of tiny bone hooks that they're using to dig into the rock as they're charging towards you. Okay. Nice. Faye, Lucas, <laughs> you've heard over the comms. What do you want to do? <laughs> should, I, should I turn it on? <laughs> should I turn it on? Yeah, turn it on. Let's, uh, let's see what happens. We're doing science. All right. There is a slowly rising hum that you first of all feel in your bones before you start to be able to hear it. And then slowly, dully, the running lights start to flicker on. There is not a lot of juice going through them, but there is now enough juice that there is at least some light other than your stab lights illuminating the rooms that you're in, the corridors that you're running down. You can start to hear the hiss as the life support systems, the air filtration systems start to move again sluggishly. There is a reassuring ping on your systems, Lucas, as a very weak Wi-Fi signal starts to be being picked up by your systems. Very, very weak, but at least there is something. I have Wi-Fi again. <laughs> More worryingly for Rook and Nox, for they are the only ones close enough to hear this. <laughs> the shaft that went up, from up there, you can hear a chunk, 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 chunk sound, as if steel doors are sliding open. Oh. Yeah, what, what, okay. That's, that's either very good or very bad. We'll worry about it later. Move back towards the crew, Eric. Let's go. Yep, yep, yep. They might have... Oh, you know, oh, I, you know, I got an idea what that could be. That could probably be really bad. They could have trapped a lot of them in behind other doors, and now they're opening. Yeah, Lucas, get eyes on those on that map if you can get one. Uh, start shutting off doors if you can, especially behind us. Try to separate just, us just, from yep, these critters. Yep, yep, yep. I'm working on it. Type, 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 type. 
It's not something you can do immediately, um, so it will take up the rest of your turn as you try to jump on their Wi-Fi. Their Wi-Fi is secured, but you have hacked enough privacy systems. They don't appear to have upgraded their security algorithms since the last time you hacked privacy systems. It looks like this place was abandoned not long after you, you know, successfully completed your last mission. So you can you can break in. What you can access from here, as you're starting to pull up, is a map of the facility, but none of the actual remote controls at the moment, just a map of the facility. But that's what you're frantically trying to work through. Faye, what would you like to do at this stage? Uh, I would like to describe the pictographs for Data Center for the others. Yes, that marries up with one of the pictographs that you saw leading uh, with the arrow effectively down the shaft is where the data center is from what is broadcast by Faye. Do you relay that? Oh, yeah. Just uh, like uh, what Faye is doing is just kind of describing it. Like, so like look for a circle with a 45 degree line with a dot on the end of the line. The second character looks like a square with a smiley face in it. It's not actually a smiley face, but it just looks like it for not crazy. <laughs> Well, that's the other way from where we're running right now. We just left that. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back around to the top of initiative. Rook, we need to make a choice as we're moving back. I'm, I'm going to start moving back for my first action to keep a distance. We either need to go jump down that hole and get that data ourselves, or we need to regroup and get everybody through this horde. That horde's going to follow us. That's the problem. Do we want to lead it to our friends, or do we want to go down to the data center? Uh, I don't want to lead it to our friends, but at the same time, I don't want to get chewed up while trying to get data from a data center. All right, let's just thin this herd as we back up and see if we can push through when we got it down. We got time. I mean, they got 10 minutes back there. It's, 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 we've got room to work. Let's work. All right, sweet. I'm going to blast away again. Same as last time, uh, 17 on 19. Eight damage this time. Ooh, that's over the threshold. That drops them immediately. As yes, your beam cannon burns a few more of them off the walls as they're starting to uh, to budge. They're still moving towards you as like in great numbers. Although rather worryingly, as your beam cannon kind of sears a few of them off the walls, they seem to realise that r- that spreading out is not the best plan because it means you can pick them off too too easily. And they start to once again concentrate, but they're now stacking up two or three deep. That's fine. That's perfect for me. Mm. That's more rockets in a clustered area. It's a great thing. Let's do that. I'm moving back for my mobility, and then I am uh, attacking. So that's an 18 power. The roll is a 10, so that's good. That hits all the damage in the world. Let me do my reactor real quick just so I know if that's going to be an issue. Oh, look, that's a 1. Great. I actually do go down for once. Look, careful. I'm trying. Yeah, firing. So now this damage. Ten. Again, enough to beat the threshold. The herd is definitely thinning out as your missiles blast in. And what you're also noticing is that some of the ones that were coming to bulk up now start moving back a little bit and melting almost into some of the, the cabling ducts in the walls where they're too small to pose a great threat, but also they're no longer targetable as they're kind of peeling away and, and disappearing into the, the wiring infrastructure. But there is still this cluster of them, which continues to, to swarm towards you. You, at this point, have backed up to a turn in the corridor. You, you're almost there, and you're about to, to move around it. And these creatures seem to realise that in a minute they will lose their moment and you're moving faster than they are. They swarm forward and then bulk up, again, stacking two, three, four high, slow their momentum, and then they're beaks all pop open and you see almost a constellation of stars as in the dim light of the running lights in the center of each of their moors a tiny tiny pinprick of blue green actinic energy starts to glow hey they're gonna shoot these things are smart and they can shoot i would like you both please to make me mobility test to dodge oh presence <laughs> test sorry presence test in fact I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Oh, I, I, this, that's better bad. for me, thank you. Oh, I still didn't roll good, though. <laughs> this is bad. I have to roll under a 9. Oh, <laughs> no. I got excited. Like, oh, I just have to roll under a 14 as I proceed to roll an 18. I actually rolled a 9. Which means you If fail. my presence is a 9 and I rolled a 9, what's that mean? It's a fail. You fail. You've got to roll <laughs> under. Darn. Okay. So we both fail. We're both caught off guard by these <laughs> yeah. fighters with a freaking laser beam. And you both take five points of damage each as these, yeah, 
It reminds you in some ways of Razor's Morby, which you've seen Razor use, but the colour is wrong and the signals it gives off that your, your kind of senses get briefly overwhelmed. And as they hit you, like you see the kind of bluish yellow sparks of bioelectricity kind of flicker around the shells. Luckily, there are Faraday cages built into your exosuits which stop you yourself getting fried. But yeah, your mecha and warning lights start to flash for a second or two before they die down again. Steam is rising from your mecha as, yeah, these things have... have and having now vomited that combined bolt of energy, super laser style at you, they then drop back down to a single layer as they continue moving towards you at speed. You do notice that some of them, that appears to have been all they they could do, and they have kind of collapsed lifeless at the back of the swarm. Wow. Does that lower their uh, swarm die? It does not, because I rolled a three. Okay. That ate up all my armor. I had five armor. It yeah, me armor. too. <laughs> and we just kind of look at each other. <laughs> Run. Yeah. Run. <laughs> Wait, do we want to run forward or do we run back? Like jump over them? Uh, yes. Okay. We need that data, and the faster we get it, the faster we can leave. They've definitely thinned out numbers wise. Okay. Definitely thinned out numbers wise. I have a plan. It's not a good plan. Lucas and Faye, you got a really weird, uncomfortable burst of static feedback across the comms from Rook and Knox a few seconds ago. Oh. Sit rep. Uh, we're gonna go get that data. Um, gonna go try to blast through this last horde, this last wave. Watch yourselves; they're in the walls. They vomit like breather. Ah, got it. Super. Sounds delightful. If y'all can start making your way towards the exit after we get most of the way towards our goal, that'll be safer. Just watch again the ducks in the halls. Okay. So we head towards the exit. I'm a little bit worried that the generator being on will draw whatever has been attacking Ox and Rook, uh, so we should. Okay, sounds good. Let's see if we can seal the vents as best we can and start moving toward the data center. We'll meet them there. I thought we were heading the other way. Or we can do that, whichever works. They said something about securing the exit? Yeah, we'll uh, clear a path from the data center out to the, the front door and uh, make, it, make it ready for them to catch up. Sounds good. Rook and I are screaming in the other hallway. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Click off goes the comms. <laughs> That's boring conversation anyway. You know they're not gonna do that, right? <laughs> I'm just, just, I'm just trying to get them to do something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's okay. All right, let's work together. We can get through this. Don't tell them I'm panicking. <laughs> I promise I won't. Lucas is gonna keep uh, working on the data stream, and seeing what he can hack into. You've managed to pull up a map. It is all marked up in uh, Aeonic Primacy data glyphs again, but presuming that Faye's going to help out with the translations there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you managed to, to translate it into Terran. It clearly marks out the, the, the facility itself, which is very small and appears to be almost spindle in shape, basically around this shaft, with the main data banks and the main research facility being... <sighs> Obviously, it's an asteroid floating in space with with weird gravity effects, but the bottom of the shaft is the data center and is the science labs. The top of the shaft is marked as Voidmore Testing Site A. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Well, uh, that's probably the origin of uh, that. And across the bridge where this swarm has been reported as coming from is effectively the living quarters. They were snagging. <laughs> You're probably not wrong. You're um, horrifying. Yeah, very horrifying. <laughs> but yeah, and if you want to pop that map up on everyone's heads-up display, I'm fine with that. You're, yeah. you're in the shared system, so yeah. Suddenly, all of you get a little mini map on your hood, <laughs> and suddenly, instead of the living quarters, has been marked out as snack room. <laughs> That's translation error. <laughs> Great work, Lucas. Thanks for getting that up. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. There you go. Good luck. All you did was proof that we still have to go through this freaking swarm of crazy things. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and Faye, what are you doing as we keep the camera on you briefly? Well, aside from translating, mostly just a uh, ticking point. If we run into a separate horde, I want to be able to be ready to protect the squishy. Yep. And just so I'm clear, are you making your way towards the data center to rejoin the rest of the party? Or are you making your way back to where you came in to basically secure your exit? 
now that we have a map, <laughs> my plan is ideally two exits out of the data center. So team data can go in, get the things, and just kind of keep moving away through a second exit. And then we can clear the back exit. There isn't a second exit on this asteroid. There is only the one way in and out. Oh, I'm sorry, of the data center room. Making your way to rejoin these, at least I suppose possibly you you could beach head at the top of the shaft, basically the spindle. So Mm -hmm. as they go down, you've got eyes on what's going on there, perhaps. Yeah, I think that might be the best plan then. Regroup at the data center. Yeah. Yeah. That's securing the exit because it's securing the first exit we need out of the data center. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. I do like that you've sent us who do not have, you know, a system, well, system intelligence uh, to go hack the uh, data center. It's, it's well, I mean, like, look, they're data cores. When you hack them, you just rip them out of the data bank. It's fine. Correction. <laughs> I sent us to explore. That, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> and back round to the top of initiative, then. You are facing the remnants of this swarm. Okay. I like the term remnants of swarm. So... Realizing that these things are defeatable, Nox kind of rallies, and contrary to her previous screaming and fleeing, she uh, sees the map, sees the destination on it, and kicks forward to go into close with them. And yeah, so get ready. Um, (laughs) Moves in, gets close, gets away from you because she basically wants to stomp on these rats. She wants to squishy squish and uh, jumps into the throng and uses her quake generator attack. Oh, nice. You actually, yeah, you're equipped for this. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I've already lost my armor. Po- she's already lost her llama, uh, armor point. Llama points? Her llama points. Her armor her points. points. <laughs> <laughs> her armor llama points, yes. She's lost all of her llama points and jumps into the fray kind of maniacally now. She is, she has gone from scared to crazy. But, you know, that's a very fine line that makes sense you know yeah rook rook has seen this before like after yeah. getting over the initial thing nox just kind of goes hard so mm-hmm. jumps in tests presence succeeds nine on 14 nice the damage is supposed to be dealt to two close enemies it's a swarm it'll damage, it'll damage okay. the whole swarm yeah sounds good and i roll oh i'm gonna roll max damage on that uh let me roll my reactor while we're at that i don't roll max on reactor but so I do eight damage. Paint me a picture. Okay. Does this eliminate the horde? It does indeed, yeah. Okay, so she gets the map. She she realizes that A team and D team are working together now. Realizes that she still has her crew and she shouldn't be scared. And dashes forward, jumps into the middle of these things. And normally when she uses her quake, it has uh, a much bigger fork on the end of her robot to do it. This time, um, the treads just kind of spin really, really fast on the bottom. And there's just, you know, guts, gore and grime from underneath as she tracks through these things, shaking the hallways around her. Like there's, you know, those particles that have been in there just like stirred up even more. And it's it's pretty visceral as she just screams and <laughs> jumps into this horde. Ah! And then all the little squeaky scritters get destroyed. <laughs> Excellent work. <sighs> I just hope that there weren't more behind those other doors that I, were I, opening. I, 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 you probably. Let's, let's get moving. That, that's, exactly. That's worst case thoughts. scenario, it's more. <laughs> um, this hallway's clear, gang. Lucas, uh, Faye, catch up to us. Let's go. And so we are dropping out of initiative. Rook, Nox, you make your way back to the top of the shaft. And yeah, you can now see the, quite clearly the data glyphs. Between... Lucas and Faye, what they've managed to do is patch into your hood effectively like an auto translate as well. So as your cameras go over it, it kind of boop. So now you know what you're looking for. And yeah, the data core and science labs are down the shaft. And there is a curving walkway effectively, a ramp effectively that, that kind of goes down around the inside of the shaft, leading down to the where the data core and that is. As I say, there's none from above. What you are picking up here, though, again, is odd gravity swells. Oh, yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. There appears to be, specifically, a strange column of gravity in the middle of the shaft where the gravity is effectively pulling you up. You're not going into it, but you can see from the way that the particles that are in the air suddenly change direction in this vaguely delineated column. 
Okay. Spooky. Yep, more spooky than anything else. We're not scientists. Is this tied in with the um, the strange audio disturbances we've been hearing? Could well be. And certainly since the lights have come on, both the strange audio disturbances and this are now more visible and more apparent. Lucas Faye, if you could touch into those and see where they're coming from or figure out what they're trying to say, that probably help us a long way on what's going on here. Yeah, I could try. There is no try, kid. Do it. I'm going to use my grapple and, like, rappel down this this thing to go faster. Rather than walking down the road. Yeah, yeah, you blaze a trail down there. Rook, you, you move a bit slower down, the, yeah. down the, the ramp. Down. Hey, does our reactors don't recharge up for now, right? You can if you want to take a rest and take some time to, to oh, no. patch up, repair your armor, and recharge your, nope, your generators. Nope, but, yeah. nope. No, I don't want a patrol suddenly showing up in the middle of a trusting. Nope, yeah. nope, nope, nope. Thanks, sir. Uh, a D6 is the perfectly reasonable reactor size. <laughs> <laughs> See, the thing is, when after this mission, you all get to level up and you get to choose a module, and one of those modules is super reactor that increases your reactor die by one size. Mm-hmm. I suspect, she, like, I don't know whether or not you're going to go for that or whether or not you're going to lean into it even further and get your, yet more stuff that burns your reactor out instead. I mean... Okay, you're still going to roll a one or a two regardless. It doesn't matter what size you're dying. <laughs> yeah, it just means I can roll more before bad things start to happen. That, you know, that's fair. That's fair. That is fair. <laughs> but yes, you start now split into f- into three separate sections. You start making your way down. Nox blazing a trail down by rappelling down uh, with her various grapples and making it down there fairly quickly. Rook moving somewhat slower down the ramps and then... Uh, Lucas and Faye play catch-up. So the camera, I think, for the moment is going to stick on uh, Knox as you get to the bottom of the shaft first. It opens out into a circular room, uh, or circular ending, and again, it has the aesthetics of this is where they mined down to and where the ore stopped that's then been hollowed out and expanded because you can see where some of the carving in this room are is very crude and where some of it has been done by high energy drills affect laser mining and where some of it has been blasted and where some of it has been carved with a bit more of the precision you expect from the Aeonic Primacy and it spreads out uh, like a wheel with a number of spokes effectively five spokes four of those are marked up as, as research and development labs and the fifth one is where the data core itself is there is lights and power down here but again it is the dregs of the battery if you know what I mean when I say that. You know, the lights aren't as bright as they should be. The hum of power isn't as strong as it should be. The Wi-Fi signals that you're picking up is one bar and running very slowly. The air circulating is not circulating very quickly. Strangely, in the center of this shaft where you've dropped down, that gravitic anomaly that was pulling up is not present here. So if you step in the middle of this room, you don't kind of get sucked up into the air. It seems to to stop about two-thirds down the shaft, where one of the ramps has a slight sticky-outy bit, where where it feels like you could jump and then catch in and, and, and move up. Okay, so Rook is going to ping that on the HUDs in the mm. map, so that way the Lucas and Faye know about it when they come down. I think that's going to be our quick evac assistance uh, if we need it are the doors to all these uh, spokes closed or open they are all open <laughs> let's close those yeah yes uh, I get to work closing the doors I yeah. ping up to Lucas I'm like Lucas help me close these doors we're gonna keep power center open we got five four research and development doors to close as you're starting to close these doors Rook will join you at the center at the bottom of the spoke and about the point that Rook gets to the bottom of the shaft, that's about the point that Lucas and Faye get to the the midpoint, effectively, where, where you came in. As you're closing these doors, it appears that they all had electromagnetic locks on them that were holding them closed. And when the power came in, they briefly released, only for maybe a second as things restarted. And in that release, it's caused them all to slide and lock open. They're not difficult to, to close, they're, they're slow, but all you need to do is hit a button and they slowly, torturously kind of close themselves. Looking into the rooms as you're kind of closing these doors, there's no movement in there. There's no bodies in there. They appear to be banks of desks and 
odd technology built into the wall. Similar to when you were on the cargo ship, some of the, the weird ways their technology interfaced with things and the odd cabling choices and that. It very much has that aesthetic in these rooms. I don't know what you're talking about. It's perfectly reasonable cabling choices. <laughs> <laughs> when your ionic premacy people are doing R&D, how further do you go? I thought that you were perfect beings. I mean, you can always improve on perfection. Oh, okay. <laughs> your brain's imperfect, so therefore... <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you became Terran? <laughs> wow. Yeah, that, that was a good one. That was a good one. If I had a heart, it'd be shattered right now. You just rebuild it. Well, I was saying you got best of both worlds now, because you're already an amazing representative for the primacy. You just don't like them, and I don't blame you. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. You suck. <laughs> but you don't. We like you. They're so easily hackable, man. Look, the passwords are procedurally generated. If you can get the algorithm down, it's, you know, I've been telling them for years, like, hey, let's change the algorithm for the passwords. But no, I'm a combat chassis, so I don't, you don't need to listen to me for... <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about, yeah. <laughs> Those doors closed. Those of you down the shaft get to the data center. The data center is a small cylindrical room, by which I mean... The room itself is is a cylinder. It's an expansion of the tunnel, but it is a cylindrical room. As you look down it, I'm not describing this very well, rather than it opening up into a proper room that's kind of square or circular, mm -hmm. uh, it's the tunnel itself widens and then ends. So it's like a cone? Yes, yeah. Okay. And the walls are lined with computer monitors and boxes behind panels with little blinking lights on. The, the lights are, are blinking dully. Like a server room? Yes, a high-tech, slightly not-quite-human <laughs> impression of a server room. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. In the centre of the cone, basically the, the narrowest part, is a, uh, again, it's, it's a cylindrical central piece that juts out. It is about three foot long by about a foot wide, uh, about, about a foot in diameter or so. It is covered in blinking lights, and there's lots of cables that wire up into that. That's the core. That's what we. So do we just do we just rip it out? I mean, that's what I would do. Will that damage it? Just effect? wait for us to get there. <laughs> We're just gonna talk about like like so if, so if I unplug this one. Yeah. Nope. Probably not that one. That one has a big old red mark on it. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's finish shutting these doors. Hang on. Let me go slap some more buttons. And... Okay. Back to uh, Lucas and Faye. So you've you've gotten to the to the top of the co of the staircase that the the ramp that then leads down to the data center. Are you staying here to hold position, Riley? Are you and RJ uh, running down to, to join the rest of the group, leaving Faye on her own up here, or there on rather? Up I here? think that Lucas has realized that he is the only techie person in this group, <laughs> and that it is probably a good idea for him to join uh, the guys at the bottom. So uh, it's fine, Nox and I've got this. We'll just rip it out and bring it up to you. That's all we got to do. Should I use my hands or my sword? Your sword. <laughs> Definitely your sword. Wait, I've got my hammer. No. We can hit it with the hammer and then just... No. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. We can, like, chip it out. Oh, wait. Shouldn't... Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas, please hurry before they break something. <laughs> and Lucas is just horrified. We're just playing it up for you. It's all good. <laughs> RJ, sensing your horror, drops to all fours and starts running down the ramp. Mm -hmm. The downside is, is that you then have to kind of spread your arms and legs as wide as you can because your nose is now about four inches off the floor as he's bounding down as quickly as he can. Um, so you're doing the Naruto run by accident. <laughs> <laughs> much faster, much faster that way. Oh, absolutely, yes. <laughs> Faye, are you staying up here by yourself to guard or are you joining the rest of the fire team down the shaft? I'll follow, but very slowly. So I'm covering the six in the shaft. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Lucas is like, Aah! Lucas said to wait. Now he's just screaming. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> stop on him. You just hear that. Kuthuk, 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 kuthuk. <laughs> RJ uh, skids, skids, uh, kind of into the server room, and then kind of pants for a little bit, and then <laughs> then goes bipedal again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. 
RJ like the classic cat that misses the jump and then's like, oh, I meant to do that. I wasn't <laughs> overreacting. <laughs> oh, I can't breathe. <laughs> I would like from you, uh, Riley, a systems espionage test because what you're trying to do here is disconnect and steal this piece of equipment without triggering the the auto wipes fail safes yeah i have systems i have espionage i can help with this yeah if you want to help out then you can give riley advantage on his role i mean i will happily take advantage let's see what the first roll is the first roll is a four let's see if i get a critical one no, I did not get a critical one. I need to roll under 19. <laughs> it takes a little bit of time to disconnect because there are quite a lot of, of primacy fail safes here that you're having to circumvent, which which you do before you then manage to disengage the core. This thing is heavy. Like it is... When you're considering how much information this facility must be storing on this, you know, it's probably not surprising that it's heavy, even with the advances in, you know, miniaturization storage. But this thing is heavy. Part of that is also there are so many inbuilt fail safes and tricks and triggers and that sort of stuff to stop people doing exactly what you've just done. <laughs> that is also some of the weight. But it's not the sort of thing you can take out here. You kind of have to bring the whole thing. Well, we've got Aerolite Void to do some of the carrying. I'll do most of the carrying, actually. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> I kind of like tie it to my back with my grapplers so I'm yeah. gonna like hinder myself but use my grapplers so I can have my hands free for my sword still yeah you definitely get the feeling that if you if you weren't in the in Aralai Void with all of like mini voids advanced servo motors and strength compensators and that you would struggle with this it would probably be a two mecha job otherwise just to carry this thing out it's really quite heavy voidling yeah voidling sorry yes voidling you have just managed to, to strap it to the back of, of the voidling when Faye, you notice movement from above you. The weird interference that's been coming from on your comms has picked up at this stage, and it definitely feels like something talking to us, or things talking to each other. There is that familiarity of flow that suggests it is comms of some form, but it is not in any language or even any frequency that you can lock onto and decode. It exists as digital static in your comm system with just enough... Either that or you all have a real bad case of pareidolia and you're assigning meaning to, to random signal. But in this place, with everything that's going on, that's, you know, you are leaning towards that. Covering the six and looking up the shaft where you've come from, right at the very, very top of that shaft, just being picked up by your stab lights. Because at that, at the very top of the shaft, the running lights haven't come on. It is still dark. There is something there. It is very big, and it moves wrong. It moves like when you wake up in the very early hours of the morning and you fumble for your phone and you surprise a spider and it skitters but you're still half asleep so it doesn't skitter in a way that makes sense that kind of nightmarish thing that is what you can just just about make out at the very top of that shaft there are smaller things moving as well we found mom just as they start to get into the lights to be seen they break the lights oh and there is a curtain of darkness that's not good down the shaft towards you uh that's not good at all we've got company anybody have any flash flashbangs anything like you know no i don't think we do hey can we overload well no overloading would be bad uh well we have what we need we can overload the systems here yeah well, we we got to get out yeah and the shaft is the only way out only way out should we be going up the shaft right now? <laughs> no, we sh shouldn't on account of the weird bug things that are there. But I do have another plan, maybe. So it is an asteroid mm. like research base where a spindle down, or I guess down because yeah. we're in space. How close is the data center to the shell of the asteroid? Mm. Not that far. Like in terms it's can we blast a hole to the outside i think i want to make a question. new hole yeah right improvised exit 
you would have to find something to do it with. Your exosuit weapons are not strong enough. Potentially, if you can get a signal out, you might be able to get the, the slip ship to circle round, target a point, and, and shoot through it with the weaponry on that. You might be able to find something that you can use to rig into a big enough explosive to blow it out. It is, as we say in the business trade, in the realms of the possible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> My plan was to try to get in touch with Valkyrie and call in an orbital strike, so... <laughs> That's but in the meantime... Are there doors in this shaft that I can start closing to try to slow them down? Not in the shaft itself, no. Uh. Only in the research rooms and uh, only in the base. What about, like, the shaft, the end of the shaft to the rooms where we're at? You could lock yourself in the data center, yeah. or you could lock yourself in one of the R&D rooms, yeah. but the actual main shaft itself does not appear to have any lockdown I think in we should itself. lock ourselves <laughs> I don't think we have a choice. There's out of here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just use that lock ourselves in the room as a backup. We shouldn't start with that. Everyone can group up at the bottom of the shaft. We'll hold them off as long as we can while Lucas tries to get a signal out. Yep. Okay. As you get to the bottom of the shaft and start getting into position, as I say, there is this curtain of darkness as these things skitter down, blow the lights. Skitter down, blow the lights. They are at the bridge at this stage, just as they start to come into range of your weapons. What you're seeing... The big thing is still very out of sight. It is a suggestion at the top of the shaft. The creatures that are taking out the lights are large. They're about the size of a person, maybe, oh, no. you know, six, five, six foot from nose to tip. Than the other things, yeah. Yeah. The bad guys got bigger. By nose to tip, I of course mean the end of their vaguely crocodilian snout to the base of the pincers that come out of what resembles nothing more than a, a millipede body. All segments and lots of legs undulating and gripping onto the wall, covered in a almost petrol in water effect shimmer across their scales. Their front limbs are long, multi-jointed, but worryingly close to hands. You know, they have opposing thumbs. They have seven finger types and too many elbow joints. And they are reaching in and, and tearing the lights out of the the wall, basically just ripping them down. And it's starting to, you know, there, there's the fragments and sparks and bits of metal as they're dropping down. And yeah, they get to, to the the bridge point. Uh, and they, are, they, they can clearly see you and this thing skitters. Then across your comes, there is once again a burst of that static louder than you've had it before and these three creatures lock their eyes on the group of you at the bottom and start dropping with great speed and that is where I'm ending the episode for this week ah. <laughs> you know, that's not a bad idea I should install more elbows <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I don't think I did a thank you at the end of the last episode. I'll have to go back and re-record one. Thank you very much to my players. You are amazing, of course. Thank you very much to my listeners. I hope you're having fun. I hope you're enjoying uh, the episode. And we will see you for the finale, hopefully, of um, Operation August Kobold next time. Force Majeure is played using the Star Wars Force and Destiny game system by Edge Studios. Our intro music is by the amazing Sly Fox Audio. Check out more of her work at soundcloud.com slash slyfoxaudio. Our outro music is Suburban Outlaw instrumental version by Forget the Whale, used with gratitude under a Creative Commons license. Many of the sound effects and soundscapes are created using Sirenscape because epic games need epic sounds. If you're enjoying the show and want to support us, there's three ways you can do that. The first is by joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash forcemajeurepod, where for as little as $1 a month you get access to outtakes, adverts, various other stuff, and my fortnightly ramblings. You can drop us a coffee at ko-fi.com slash forcemajeurepod. 
or you can leave us a rating and review wherever you get your podcasts. If you want to interact with us, there's a few ways you can do that. We are on the social medias, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter as at Force Majeure Pod. And we're over on Mastodon as at Force Majeure Pod at Dice.can. You can also join our Discord, link in the show notes. Thank you very much for listening and being with us as we tell these stories. We hope you are having fun and we will see you next time.